Hey there, this is Jackie of the Maiden Voyage podcast, and you're listening to season two, the one where we dive into Instagram and how your brand can kill it. Maiden Voyage is a podcast recorded by the women of Impulse Creative. We are CEOs, salespeople, project managers, writers, and marketers. We're also wives, rad moms, remote employees all over the country, in-house staff, empowered single ladies, and all around ass kickers. There's a lot of challenges we face, overcome, and share that make our voyage different than those of the men we work with. This is our journey. All right, ladies, we are back. We're sad to be missing Audrey. She is traveling right now, so she's not gonna be joining us today. But the four other mermaids are here to talk about Instagram, brands we love, people who are brands that we love on Instagram, and just why we love them and how they're freaking killing it. Stay tuned till the end though, because we are going to provide you guys with some really awesome tips about how to level up you, your brand or your personal brand, you know, image on Instagram. So I know that we all have like, we follow like really different things and we're into really different types of things and features and, and brands and people. So this is going to be a really eclectic like group. Um, of Instagram handles that we're going to talk about. We're also going to link to all of them so you can check out all the people that we're talking about and following today. So you'll be able to see that below. But um, Jen, why don't you kick it off? Because I know that you were really excited about this. And I believe you have a few people you're really um, stoked to share with us. Yeah, sure. I'd love to dive in first. Um, so for all of our listeners, when we were talking about this on our um, internal Slack channel, I poised the question of, can a person be a brand? And a lot of the girls were like, yes, absolutely. A person can be a brand. Um, but I still like wasn't exactly satisfied with that. So I picked people that were people, but also have their own separate brands to kind of touch on both of them. Because I think it can be a fine line, right? Like you can absolutely be your own your own brand. But a lot of listeners are probably listening to this because they want maybe help with their business or something right. like that. Um, well, and I find that interesting, Jen, because I was kind of in the same conundrum and like agreed with this statement, like, yes, you can be a brand, right? But I think there's a fine line between like you and your brand and the person yeah. I, I selected, um, who I'll talk about, I think is like, really swims that line, that, that messy line really, really nicely. Mm, yes. I love it. Yeah. Um, so for mine, um, I'll start off with my girl Zoe. I don't know if any of you keep up with Zoe Deschanel. I think she is perfection. She is fabulous. She is kind, sweethearted. Um, and one of the reasons that I love her so much is that she has a passion for environmentally friendly um, kind of products and a mindset. Um, she's very health conscious. Uh, she cares and advocates a lot for organic and non-GMO and um, resourceful farming and different ideas like that. And she is also just a killer fashion queen. She has a very old school vintage um, adorable kind of style that I think is very flattering on her and that's so what I love Jen about her sense of style she has a very unique sense of self right yes but I love that it carries over on screen yes yeah I love she you know what I mean like roles. who she new was girl. what was that show she was in with those dudes? new girl new girl right so like so I feel like the way she dressed in New Girl is literally how she dresses in real life. Right. Very, yeah. very similar. Absolutely. Um, and I think that speaks volumes to her as a person, though, because she understands who she is and uses those attributes to personify better, more realistic roles, which yeah. is something I really like. Um, yeah. And she and him is like gold. Ah, their Christmas album. I play that on repeat every year. I have it on vinyl. Awesome. Um, so she is so, so multifaceted. She is just a kind, generous person. She's a musician, like Jackie just said. She's an actress. Uh, like, there's nothing that she doesn't do. Yeah. Um, and she also owns a brand called Hello Giggles. Have any of you women followed that before? No, I don't know Hello Giggles. So it's pretty adorable. Um, they're a really fun uh, Brand to follow on Instagram, on Facebook specifically, they advocate for all things female. So they post about um, wellness, mental health, sex education, shopping advice, beauty advice. Um, they are just like a feminine steroid brand and I absolutely love them. Uh, she also 
and the reason I like it is because Hello Giggles, the, it has giggles in the name, right? So a lot of their, their brand is centered around humor. I mean, they do cover some very serious subjects and that is also something that they approach, but they try to make light. It's a little bit more of a, a modern, younger brand. They, they use a lot of memes and just cute things like an otter raising its hands. I'm looking at like on their Instagram page right now. And, um, they, they approach a lot of different topics around like sexuality and, um, like racism and rape and like they, they cover it all. Um, so they are a very impactful brand just to follow, to stay up on the latest news in those realms. And I love that. Huge. Yeah. So um, did she start that or is she just like an advocate for it? I believe she started it. I don't want to say that for sure. Um, I should have looked that up beforehand, but it's something to definitely look into. I know she's been behind it for a few years now because um, I started following it maybe back in like 2014 or something. Um, and I believe she is the CEO. I should, I'll check on that. We'll update you on that later. <laughs> um, my second brand is again, like a person slash kind of their brand, um, Jonathan Van Ness from the show Queer Eye. I absolutely love him. He is fabulous. He is, again, someone who is very, very comfortable and confident in themselves. Um, one of the reasons that I love Jonathan so much is he, he is all about embracing who you are as a person in your journey right now. Um, and all about self-love and acceptance. Uh, he has an interesting story. You know, he grew up uh, being bullied and for being gay when he was younger and went through a lot of traumas in that regards and kind of uh, blossomed into a beautiful butterfly, as he would probably say. Um, Isn't he writing a book right now? Is that him or just releasing a book? Yes. It just, yeah. I was actually right before our call this morning on I order too many books. I was on Amazon being like, do I order this? I have so many books I have sitting waiting to read. Um, but yes, he is, he wrote a book kind of, uh, about his journey. Um, and on the show Queer Eye, which is kind of the brand I'm getting into, he is kind of like the beauty expert. So I don't know if any of you have seen Queer Eye, but there's five people and they each concentrate in different realms, like beauty, like uh, flipping um, cooking food. yeah, yeah. Food. yep okay we watch <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> for listeners who don't watch get your ass on there and watch it it's good um, <laughs> but he he just always makes me feel good he is one of those people to follow on instagram when you need to pick me up because every single thing that he posts or in general the queer eye instagram page as well is something uplifting and similar to zoe and hello giggles they, they touch on very, uh, what's the word I want to use here? Controversial. Sensitive, controversial subjects. Yeah. Um, and right, yeah. JVN does it with such a passion. Um, he posts about a lot of like political changes too. So if that's something around your, like up in your alley, it's fun. He posts hair and beauty tips on his because that is kind of his profession. And he's like a figure skating prodigy right now. He's been taking all these like figure skating lessons. And I know it's really random, but it's been exciting to kind of watch his journey and his dedication to picking up this sport that was never in his wheelhouse yeah. and watching him grow um, and post videos of that. It's, it's inspirational. I feel like to me, uh, uh, in my head, I'm like, okay, he, he wrote a freaking book. Like, he's on a TV show. He's, like, fuller part-time doing, like, hair and beauty stuff. He's figure skating. Like, when does this fab queen sleep? Like, I don't right? understand. <laughs> well, it sounds like both of the brands that you like, they do it all. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I really admire um, personas. Multitaskers. <laughs> with moxie they got moxie like they're always doing it I mean, they crush I it i love that moxie <laughs> such a good word what about you rachel who are you following these days who do we need to keep our tabs on so i mean this is probably pretty uh specific to me just because i have an allergy child but i follow the milk allergy mom and she's basically just like a complete support group she gives ideas on dinners alternatives for snacks uh, that are completely dairy free and not just dairy free. She'll do like allergen friendly stuff too. And she'll, um, do videos of her cooking recipes and it's just 
as a milk allergy mom, um, it's very helpful, especially yeah. when I first found out of the allergies. It was very, very helpful to know that one, I wasn't the only one, and two, I didn't even know where to start. So, right. like the teal pumpkin project, which is another allergy friendly thing when you see a teal pumpkin outside of the house that means they have allergy friendly options most people don't know what the teal pumpkin actually means and that's right. where i learned that so it's very very helpful in understanding what is an allergy what is not and i i just love what she does it's it's support 100% yeah, support yeah i love that so does she post like actual pictures of products? Like maybe she'd post like a box of she crackers. She does. And say, yes. This is and, okay. Yep. And, and she's very popular on Pinterest as well, but uh, Instagram, she'll do mostly like the recipe videos and she'll post um, like Nestle just came out with white chocolate that is dairy free. Oh. oh girl, what? So yeah. So, and then she'll, she'll post a picture of that and then she'll post recipe pictures of that being used. Oh, I love um, that. Yeah, it, it's awesome. Um, and I didn't know that that was even a thing. I thought you had to buy just Enjoy Life as a brand that um, is all allergen, top eight allergen friendly. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. So I didn't even, I hadn't even heard of that brand either until I followed Milk Allergy Mom and she's like, this is the brand to go to, or this is the brand, or Dandy's marshmallows, because marshmallows have eggs. And I also have an egg allergy here, so it's, it's oh, pretty I'm, helpful. <laughs> well, I'm, I love that she's like just made your life easier, right? Like if like yeah. there's nothing else you can say about a brand, it's that they've helped me make my life more livable, then I think that's a win. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's more like peace of mind, and I trust her. So yeah. it's kind of hard to trust somebody that you don't know well with, and like as marketers isn't like building trust around your brand around your content like a mm -hmm. core value that we should all try to instill as a marketer right like people buy from people they trust and and i think that's amazing that you you've nailed it on the head in my opinion of like if i'm gonna buy from a brand it's because i, I like know and trust them right mm -hmm. right and yep. you know so, firsthand she's experienced these herself so mm -hmm. like why would she put herself at risk or her loved ones right. technology at risk? Right. So that is why the trust is there. It's authentic. She's like living the truth of her brand. Yep. Yeah. I she's actually that. been like, um, I think on the Today Show, she's she's featured in BuzzFeed. She's gaining some some traction for all That's this, great. just for awareness too. Well, we'll so, definitely link her out too. Cause like I'm an yeah. adult with a dairy allergy. So like, I'd love to know mm -hmm about some milk chocolate that's dairy free. And also I feel like a lot of dark chocolate is dairy free because they use, they don't Just use cocoa. milk in it, yeah. right? cocoa, but. Well, like no, this is white chocolate though. Right, Like I can never eat white chocolate. It's full of cream. Yep. This is yep. exciting news, cool. Who else um, are you one, one, of my, one of my latest favorite posts is like all of the Disney treats you can go eat that are completely allergen friendly. Oh, that's cool. So that's like cool. where, what restaurants can do what, what to ask for, what pictures of the, the pastries. Like, like, um, what do they call it? It's a menu. It's like a secret menu. It's like a Disney oh. dairy oh. menu. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's super helpful. I'm like, oh, pinning that. I am saving that, whatever it be. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So who else are you following? Um, so I also follow Sephora, just, I'm not wearing any makeup, but I love to watch people put on makeup. Right. So, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love watching the techniques. I am fully capable of doing it, just lazy. So uh, I, I love seeing all the new products and the, the way that they can do things, the inspirational experiments of makeup and how to make it unique to you. I really, really enjoy watching theirs. And, and like, for example, this Urban Decay um, Naked Honey eyeshadow just came out. Oh, a new palette? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And it's all like golds. I'm Ooh. like, I'm buying that. I but love Sephora that. got me for I sure. I on my Christmas list. That's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was going to be, but I was like, nope. Nope, I'm just gonna get that. Buy that right now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. That's fun. Um, and and I mean, on on kind of like the following the Zoe 
track the honest company i mean yeah. Yeah. everybody knows who honest and and they are killing their instagram right i should check them out i don't follow them on instagram you well, that's, t- it's like children's products oh okay like, like, well like, not necessarily they they now came out with makeup did they mm-hmm Oh, yeah, I the honest beauty. I know them for like diapers and like mm-hmm. detangler and stuff like that. Mm. Cool. Awesome. Yep. Well, well, they have a whole to bunch let of stuff. you go last because you have like 19 yeah. that you want to talk about. <laughs> you know, into like some really awesome tips. Yeah. And tips. I will just, I go last. Yeah, you're going last. I'm just going to very quickly talk about my two favorite picks um, and then we can move on. So uh, the human person brand that I follow is Rachel Hollis. And she's an author and a motivational speaker. She wrote like, girl, wash your face, girl, stop apologizing. If you haven't read them, I highly recommend them. Um, and I, she has, she's a mom. She has like two or three boys. They adopted a daughter. Her and her husband are like, like Maverick and Maven entrepreneurs. Like they both, like he is an, I think like a Emmy winning guy or like he's won Emmys or something, I believe. Like, so they're like a power couple. Um, she used to be an event planner like owned her own business and just started writing and speaking. And she just like, she is inspirational to the max. And I just, I love following her because she's like real as hell. She like gets off a plane, goes home, goes into mom mode, gets on a stage, you know, she's working professional mode and her books are fantastic. So I've even taken away like parenting tips from her that like I do with my daughter now. So I just find her to be like inspirational, whether you have kids or not her books are life-changing. So I highly recommend Girl, Wash Your Face. I know Jen, you read it. Yeah, her tone is fantastic. Sometimes in self-help books, it's hard for um, you to have like a playful side to it. And she really hit the nail on the head. She is a great. Um, amazing. I know. Yeah. And they do a podcast, whatever. She's amazing. Her and her husband, she's like a runner or trying to be a runner, but she's ran some marathon. Like she's just awesome. So if you're looking for like a little motivation with a little bit of self-help, She's the girl for you. The other brand I really love is Becca Cosmetics. I use um, one of their products. Um, uh, it's like a shimmer, um, a highlighter. Their highlighters are like to die for. Um, what I love about the brand itself is they're very inclusive. So when they're doing videos, sometimes it's a man, sometimes it's a woman, sometimes you're light, sometimes you're dark. And I just love that they're showing you how to use their product. So it's super like self-focused, but the content is all about Becca. But it is also just very inclusive and I, I, I just, I just love it. And, um, go back at cosmetics. They're doing a great job. Lots and lots and lots of videos, um, which I think on Instagram is like how you should be trending in my opinion. So they're hitting the nail on the head, on the head with that marketing tactic. So Courtney, resident right. marketer, you <laughs> have a lot that you want to talk about. So in the effort to keep our listeners, uh, with us just like a little bit on each one because I know you yeah, have yeah no worries don't worry I will keep it concise <laughs> <laughs> um I know how you like to talk about Taco Bell so. I mean I'm just a little bit obsessed <laughs> so yeah I mean I kind of purposely wore this just for this episode because I love Taco Bell and <laughs> if you're not following them shame on you um <laughs> So basically on Instagram, they're just super fun, artsy, interactive. Um, they are super good at just making their, their visuals super distinct and good at following patterns. So I actually have their Instagram pulled up to just kind of show you an example. They always do things in threes. So um, they follow a certain pattern. Like, I don't know if you could see, like you can see, like they follow the same sort of visual. Interesting. Um, style and they do it all in threes and it's super unique and that's an interesting tactic yeah and it's just like more and more that's like yeah or like six pictures make one big picture yes yeah Yeah. they actually did that so I was gonna actually bring up um if you haven't heard um they have and and I (laughs) anything Taco Bell news related like I I will have like 12 people tag me in it. <laughs> so <laughs> if you haven't seen it, they actually have this really awesome, Rachel, I know you tagged me in it, um, that Palm Beach hotel and resort that they, um, yeah. it's just, and it's like, it's only open for, it's, it's temporary. And I'm like, damn, I really want to go. But like a pop-up hotel, right? It's a pop-up hotel. And like, so it's, it's kind of hard to tell. There's a lot going on, but 
they have this like huge, it's kind of like a mural and it's so like strategically planned out where like, and I've seen a lot of, you know, other brands, brands doing that. Yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of brands doing that. So sorry. These dogs are going nuts. Um, so yeah, um, they're just super interactive and engaging too. I have to share my screen because of course I can't talk about Taco Bell and not brag about this, but <laughs> so Cinco de Mayo, I believe it was 2015, was a great year for me because they um, introduced their Taco Bell breakfast and they did a Cinco de Mayo campaign where um, if you post, they're giving away free breakfast and if you took a picture with it and used their hashtag, um, they were, I, I guess, going to repost it. I thought it was just like a for fun thing, but I woke up the next morning to this. <laughs> Can you see that? Ah, look at you! No, I'm on Taco Bell famous, so like, of course, yeah. it's my favorite. <laughs> so uh, that was probably one of the best days of my life. Um, and if you're wondering <laughs> if it gets you free Taco Bell, it does not. I've tried. Uh, uh, <laughs> but but I also think that they have a great sense of humor. Like, are you going to talk about Wendy's? Oh yeah, that's next on my list. Okay. But um, yeah, they just do a great job about. Um, making their content super engaging and they definitely do a good job keeping the user in mind. Another thing that they do on Instagram that I love, they do a really good job utilizing the story feature on Instagram in a way that's like interactive and fun. So a lot of times they'll create um, phone backgrounds that are like super cool and like trendy. And so it literally like just gives you step-by-step -step directions like um, in the next, in the next post or next story, like hold your, hold your thumb down on the screen and screenshot it and you'll have a new, background and they'll give you multiple options like they were doing that like weekly so wow. they do a really good job of like giving users something cool to use on their like for their personal device and just you know that's super, awesome yeah and they also do a really good job collaborating with other brands and like they have good relationships with other businesses like um, they partnered up with chubby's forever 21 to create a, a clothing line um, diffy eyewear sunglasses chubby's l space for like bathing suits so um, you know, they really do a good job just from taking a fast food restaurant and finding ways to like take their brand and work with other businesses to, you know, display their, like, like I'm wearing, I'm wearing a Taco Bell sweater. Like it's not, it's not just tacos. Like it's, they're right. really like unique and good about, you know, making their brand super engaging and fun. Um, I love it. Yes. Oh, and then if you haven't already had their breakfast, please do yourself a favor. And <laughs> I haven't. I should try it. I'm telling you, like, I am such a Taco Bell advocate. Like, their breakfast is so underrated. The bacon crunch wrap is magical. And there's <laughs> never going to be a line, I promise you, because I feel like people are too scared to try it. But, like, you just need to give it a chance. I have, I have introduced so many people to it, even people who are vegetarians. And I've never once gotten negative feedback. So do yourself a favor <gasps> and try their breakfast. And thank hey, you. Taco Bell, hire us for your marketing. We have a, <laughs> seriously, a person who loves it. Would love to take you on as a client. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wendy's, yes, Wendy's is the best. Um, I mean, everyone knows Wendy's for roasting other businesses yeah. and people. Um, I love that. I love that they have like a sense of humor about their marketing. Yeah, exactly. And, and I'm not saying like... I'm not saying like every brand needs to go on Twitter and like, you know, jokes. People. like, I mean, you have to find what fits your brand and, and you have to find ways to uh, be engaging and you have to find a way to find that tone of voice that fits what you're trying to achieve. And I feel like it just fits Wendy's and like they did a great job building that familiarity through that tone of voice. Like I know they did uh, on national Rose day, they, they literally on Twitter, they just like encouraged everyone to reach out, use their hashtag and Wendy's was going to roast them. And I, they had several different brands and just people reaching out. It went viral. It was, I had, I like, I'm like, I, how can I focus like at work today? Cause like all I wanted to do was just read all the threads cause it was so entertaining. So <laughs> they definitely do a really good job, um, you know, engaging with their customers and other brands just to make, make it exciting. Um, another, 
I was gonna say I'm looking at them their Instagram right now on my other stream as you speak and I'm like legit laughing. Oh yeah. So they like reposted all of these people's Twitter posts about like they have one that says, My car keeps doing that thing where you get in and suddenly you're at the Wendy's drive through getting spicy nuggets. And <laughs> but it's like someone tweeted that and they reposted it. And that's yeah. so they're super good with like, you know, um, interacting with, with other users. And then they also uh, do a really good job, like keeping up with the trends and like, you know, they post a lot of memes. And um, so they're, they're good with like staying up to date with the trends. Um, another brand that I think is kind of underrated that I love, and I realize I'm just talking about food, but I, I swear I follow like millions <laughs> of other brands, but these are just the ones that really stick out to me. Um, Tijuana Flats. Um, I actually went to a PR conference a few years ago and I, I got the chance to listen to their marketing director speak and I was just like blown away and so impressed. Um, Is that with, a Mexican restaurant? Oh yeah. Oh, I guess you, you guys don't have that up in. in no, place. I've never heard of that. Well, next time you're at HQ, we're going to have to fix that. Okay. <laughs> really good. Um, so yeah, I just, I just love the brand that they've created. It's super unapologetic. Um, it's not your typical like family oriented place and and they own that you know they they know their audience and they rock it they're they're unapologetic i mean they're hot, they have a hot sauce bar and i always feel awkward like when i use uber eats and i'm ordering from tijuana flats cuz like you can't like if i'm going to leave notes i'm going to want the hot sauces like that's why you go to tijuana flats mm -hmm. and their hot sauce names are like smack my ass and call me sally so like I'm leaving, I'm like writing in the notes, like, can you please get me some jalapenos, smack my ass and call me Sally's? Like, I'm just like, I hope the Uber East guy realizes like, this is not a joke. <laughs> right, right. But they're just so funny and they're super unique. So no, it, you know, it's a chain here in Florida um, that started out in Orlando and no Tijuana flats that you walk into is the same. Like all the artwork, it, it follows the same theme. It's super like, it's kind of dark and edgy and like pop art, but it's not the same. Like you'll never walk into the same Tijuana Flats. Okay. And I'm pretty sure I remember um, the marketing director say that um, a lot of like their digital artwork is all done by hand. So it's never the same. Like it's just super unique. Um, and they also have like really fun campaigns that they do. Um, they gave, they were giving away free tacos to like students who like flunked their tests and papers like if you brought in a, a, a paper that you failed like you could show them and get like a free taco from it and they, they did they put a twist on it to make it super fun and so they're just like a fun like they kind of have this like pervy sense of humor that's just like unapologetic and hilarious <laughs> um the last brand that i wanted to talk about that's not food is airy um mm, american Eagles, like lingerie type of brand yeah. um so they just, you know, they're all about, their mission is to empower all women to love their real selves. And they use the hashtag Airy Real. Um, it's just super authentic and uplifting. Um, if you ever feel like, you know, like you're beating yourself up, like they do a really great job posting content that's super real and unphotoshopped. I've even heard of them having like empowering sticky notes in their fitting rooms that like yes they do I you, can leave, did that. you can leave a sticky note for someone I do every time I go in there I do you can write a note and put a sticky note on the mirror I yeah. actually and they encourage like the hashtag like I was in a fitting room once with all of these sticky notes surrounded by like a tall stand-up mirror and I took a picture of myself on Instagram and like hashtag I remember that picture yeah. yeah I think that's where I saw it for the first time but yeah. I just love, I love their body inclusive messaging. Like they, they make, they, well, I wouldn't say they make bathing suits for everyone because none of their bathing suits fit me, but like <laughs> their goal is to be like size agnostic, I think. Right? Exactly. Like, I feel like, you know, it's, it's hard to shop as it is like with how society like, you know, promotes clothing is like, it's unrealistic when you're like shopping online and you're like, that looks awesome. And it shows up and you look like a potato on it. Like when you put it on, <laughs> like Aerie does such a good job. Like they have so many, like they, they have, it's just the most diverse line of models that you'll see. And it's yeah. like, it's and like a lot of, a lot of like, like Instagram famous, but also like real famous, like humans are like in on it. Oh yeah. I love it. Of like all sizes. 
Exactly. It's just, you know, it's, it's setting realistic expectations yeah. and it's just, it, it's refreshing to see, you know, a, a picture, like a model with cellulite. Cause that's real life. Like we, everyone has cellulite, like, Amen. so, you know, unedited raw photos, like it's refreshing to see something when it's, it's relatable and you know, it, it's just real. Yeah. I think that's what I love most about so I've been taking notes of we've, as we've all been talking about like tips that we can give to our TR listeners. Mm. Um, and so I'm just going to share kind of my takeaways and then Courtney, if you have anything else to add, this is the part people where you need to listen about how you can level up your Instagram brand. So the first thing I want to talk about and, or just highlight is authenticity. So like know who you are, know your audience, talk to them directly. And I also want to make this note from like a political standpoint, like, if you as an organization or a brand are going to have like a political standpoint, in my opinion, that's okay. Do you? And if people unfollow you because of that, then they are not your people. So if someone's unfollowing you because your message is not for them, then they're not for you. And I think we can't as a brand, please everyone, a personal brand or a, an actual brand, like you're not going to please everyone. So like lean in to whatever you are, like double down on that. Um, and, and that will be like your true authentic message, you know? So I took that away from what we've all said. Um, focus on the customer experience. I love that you said that Courtney with like Taco Bell sharing those screensavers, the way they did all of their imagery, like the customer experience really needs to carry over into your social media platforms. Have fun because it's social media, right? Like have fun. Um, and I said, know your audience and images. Is there anything else that you guys would add to that Courtney? Um, I think the biggest thing is just don't ignore it. Don't ignore your audience. Um, hire a community manager, someone who's going to take time out of their day to acknowledge the comments and everything that you're getting. User generated content is such a great way to connect with your audience and, you know, express that authentic authenticity. <laughs> so I think that's a huge takeaway. And like you that's said, that could be like, not everyone is going to like, not everyone is going to agree with your message and that's okay. Like focus on your ideal audience and just roll with it. Like who cares what everyone else says, be unapologetic and own what you're, what you stand for. Yeah. 100%. Jen, and I, I was going to say like, if you're a newer company that hasn't defined your buyer personas, that's a really good first step to try to figure out what exactly your, who exactly your audience is so that you can decide who you're marketing to specifically and also understand kind of like both Courtney and Jackie were saying, who exactly you're not. You could even come up with a list of people we're specifically not trying to target. And yep. then you can form your tone of voice and your ideals and your values around those audience members and make sure that you stick to it in that specific realm. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I think these are really great takeaway tips that um, our listeners can now apply to their Instagram page. Anything else anyone wants to add? I was going to say, just make sure you're engaging in the comments as well. Yeah. Right. So like have that community manager, make sure that they're not only like using user generated comment, but like they're mm -hmm. on staying on top of it for sure. Yeah. One thing that I, I saw that people are starting to do, which I think is fun, um, is, you know, everyone, the hashtag, hashtag is the name of the game on Instagram and you be mindful to click into hashtags that you're participating in and make friends. If you're always hashtagging Slay Queen, see what other people that are hashtagging Slay Queen are posting because you might find like-minded individuals that you can start following. And even from like a company perspective, start making making assets, making friends yeah, that you and can engage with. Jen, you're totally triggering me because that is like exactly what our interview from Inbound talked about. Not like not doing social, being social. Yes. Like you need to level up your brand so that you're being social, not just doing it. Yes. Oh, that's like the biggest takeaway of the day. Right. I love like, it. Okay, Shayna, we hear you. Thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, stay your course. And remember, this is your voyage. Make it amazing.
Sadly, that'll do it for this week's episode of Maiden Voyage. We'd like to thank you, our amazing listeners, because let's face it, lady life is hard. It's incredible how much we accomplish every day, and we all deserve awards just for existing. If you're watching the show, make sure that you subscribe, click on that thing for instant notifications, speak your mind in the comments, and share us with your fellow Voyagers.